I bought 64 cores of CPU power from eBay for just over $6 a core. Surely this is gonna go fine, right? <laughs> Now I think these are the CPUs. And then I think these may be the coolers. And this is the motherboard that'll house all of the madness. So let's open this up first. Oh yes, Shenzhen. Oh, we get a rear I.O. shield of not the worst quality, at least it's got the like squidgy stuff on the back. And some SATA cables, very nice. Ugh, finally getting there. Oh, wow. Oh, no way, we've got like a Ziploc anti-static bag. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Look at that. Oh, look at that monster. Now the first thing that punches you in the face when you see this motherboard are the two gargantuan SP3 sockets, which house AMD Epic CPUs. They are complex inducingly massive sockets. Look at them. Next you'll notice that each socket has eight RAM slots, giving us a total of 16. Oh, there's some useful information down here. Always populate DIMM X1 first. So I'm assuming that's this one and this one. Oh, there's a whole bunch of jumpers down here, which I'm guessing are for like various BIOS and startup settings. And is that? That looks like a micro SD card slot. That's fascinating. Oh, what are these connectors? I've never seen those before. CPU 1 SATA 0 to 3. Oh, that's cool. When it comes to rear I.O., we've got Mesozoic period port and a whole bunch of Ethernet. They've really, they've really gone all in on Ethernet here. With that, let's see what Epic CPUs we got to fill them sockets. Oh, never mind, this is a different box. Oh, the coolers are also in here, I see. Wow, that's quite a beefy looking cooler. We've got five heat pipes, a decent bit of fin stack, and a powerful looking fan. But the most important part is that. This cooler actually has enough girth to satisfy an Epic CPU, something that not many consumer coolers can say. So yeah, I got two of these. Ooh. And then finally we have our massive CPU. I'm really excited to see this thing. Let's. Kind of do that. Ooh, I wonder if this was factory packaging or not. <laughs> it really looks like it's not, but it's not a consumer grade product. So I guess you never know. Ooh, it's also got a little Ziploc anti-static bag. I really like that. Oh, it tore. And that's our CPU. So this is a Ryzen Epic 7551, a 32 core 64 thread monster from 2016, which at launch cost almost $3,000. And I bought two of them for $400 off of eBay. So they're like, definitely gonna work, right? So now comes the fascinating part where we see what it's like mounting the CPU in here. Uh, we've got these three bolts that we need to undo. I wonder if the iFixit kit will have that bit. This actually kind of looks like it. No way, that's it. Okay, so this is number one that we undo. Oh, they just screwed one of them down. Okay, very good. Ooh, covers the socket. Now, as far as I understand it, we just kind of... Oh, no, 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 wait. There's this bracket. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Slide through like that. And then... Do I just put it down? And then this one... And then I think we just... Cool, and then just like that, we have a mounted Epic CPU. 
So we've just got one more to go, and then we have huge amounts of power. And then when it comes to the CPU cooler, I guess it just kind of goes on like that, right? Obviously you need to do thermal paste. I think I'm gonna do like a cross and then some dots. So we'll see if it catches on fire, it clearly isn't enough. And then we just pop this bad boy on. Next, I just kind of want to see if it works. So I'm going to drop a single stick of RAM per CPU in, hook this up to a power supply, and pray to Thor that it turns on, and then we'll worry about populating all of the RAM channels. I <laughs> I don't know where I'm gonna find enough RAM for this thing. Now for the first boot, I'm gonna try some of this JDAC RAM that uh, Patriot sent over, just to see if it works with like non-ECC memory. I can't see why it wouldn't, but you never know with this kind of stuff. And after very not precariously removing the M.2 standoff so I could mount some storage in this bad boy, and dropping in a CMOS battery, I was ready to test fire this monster. So now I just need a graphics card to drop in here. I think I'm gonna keep it in the family, you know? Uh, so I'm gonna use an AMD GPU. Oh. Oh, what? Because of how long the graphics card is, it hits these and then won't socket. That's stupid. Hopefully it works in this bottom one. Let's give it a try. Ah, oh, yes, that fits very good. Oh! It looks promising. Things are lighting up in places. I just need to figure out how to... Oh, I think this is the front I... Oh, that's under the graphics card, very good. After spending quite some time trying to jumpstart this abomination, it became clear it wasn't jumpstarting. Yeah, I don't know, this doesn't seem to be working. Oh, it's not responding to power at all, even with no RAM in it. I don't know if server hardware is different or not, but that's not a good sign. But with a bit of research, I identified a potential solution. Oh, okay, so big problem. Uh, I didn't do enough research going into this video, which is quite normal. That's usually the case, except this is server stuff. So th the problems are much bigger than they are with consumer grain hardware, apparently. But the problem here could be potentially that this motherboard may only support ECC RAM. So none of the RAM that I have will work in this motherboard. And the problem is kind of compounded by the fact that each one of the RAM slots is a channel. So for me to run these CPUs at their like full memory bandwidth, I'm gonna have to buy 16 sticks of ECC RAM. So this cheap many core setup is turning ruinously expensive real fast. <laughs> now I don't know that that's the problem. I feel like even with no RAM in it, we should at least get fans spinning or something, but it's not a consumer motherboard. So I, I don't know. And either way, I am eventually gonna need the RAM anyway. So yeah, with that, let me go bankrupt myself buying ECC RAM quickly. <sighs> Yay, the massive amount of ECC RAM has finally arrived. I'm not 100% sure it's actually gonna work in this system because it doesn't have specific listed compatibility, but it, it should. So let's give it a try. Can't believe all of this is going into one system. I don't know, I feel like they need to start putting some, just a little bit of RGB on this server crap. I don't know, what do you think? Okay, so that is what 256 gigs worth of RAM looks like in 16 channels. Very nice. I really hope it turns on now. Now I've also swapped a smaller graphics card in. This is an RX 5700 XT off of AliExpress. Uh, just so that I can have easier access to like the front IO connectors and stuff because this one actually fits in the top slot Oh, it still doesn't work. Oh, let's take the graphics card out uh... 
Desperation growing, I even consulted the manual like some kind of loser, but I still couldn't get it running. So I decided to go through the definitely not tedious process of removing all 700 sticks of RAM and CPUs and stuff to see if I could figure out what wasn't working. Oh no, wow, I clearly need to rethink my thermal paste application. That is not ideal. Although that wouldn't be the reason why the system wasn't booting. It would just make it catch on fire while running Cinebench. But let me remove this CPU and see if we can get it running with just one. The CPU looks okay, aside from like a little spot over here. But I, I don't know, I can't tell. Oh, but it still doesn't work. Let me swap out the one remaining RAM stick. No, that doesn't work either. Okay, so that still didn't work. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is swap the CPUs in this socket. Oh, I am real worried to see <laughs> what the, the thermal paste application situation is gonna look like under here. Let's... A bit better than the other one, actually. Now, not wanting to drag this out too much, I spent the next couple of hours trying every combination of CPU, socket, RAM, and socket, I, I just couldn't get it working. I, I did make a bit of progress, we got some fans spinning at a point, but that was it. Uh, but it did help me come to the conclusion that one of the CPUs is definitely dead, the other one is just maybe dead, and the motherboard is maybe dead. Uh, after that, I decided to take the whole setup to a local recycling shop where the owner and I spent a while trying all of his various ECC RAM sticks in here, and we also couldn't get it running. So Kevin and I came to the conclusion that this suspiciously cheap server hardware that I bought off of eBay, it, it just isn't working. It's, it's broken. So that's, that's all I got for you today. Now I am in talks with the seller who insists that it is working. Uh, so they're sending out a special kit of RAM, which they say will definitely work with it. But once I see that not working, I will still make a concerted effort to get a setup like this running from eBay parts. Uh, so subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss that video, which will come out over the next couple of months when I can get that going. But for the foreseeable future, this did not work out. Uh, so with that, thank you very much for watching another pointless video, and uh, yeah, until the next one, bye-bye.